Good morning. I'm here with Matthias Griselli, who is the Deputy Director of the Fields Institute for Research in Mathematical Science in Toronto, Canada, and he is also an INET grantee with McMaster University. Matthias, thanks for being uh, with us this morning. Thank you. Um, I'm interested in your background. Uh, you actually are not an economist by training, you are a mathematician. And um, many people have argued that one of the afflictions uh, that has um, you know, affected them, the economics profession has been its um, over-mathematization. So people are asking us, why are you having anything to do with uh, the Fields Institute? Maybe you'd want to answer that point. <laughs> right, yeah. So, so yes, I'm, I'm not an economist. I uh, have an undergraduate degree in physics, and then I did my PhD in mathematical physics. Uh, so, and then after that, I became interested in finance, as many uh, physicists did in uh, the 90s and beginning of the 2000s. Arguably, so, that's what people said that the problem started. But that's correct. <laughs> yeah. And so, so it, I, I worked for about 10 years in uh, mathematical finance, and uh, so things like uh, derivatives pricing and risk management, and and of course uh, CDOs and, and uh, structure products, uh, as you said, that were then uh, rightly, I think. Uh, uh, blame for part of uh, the the uh, causes of the crisis, and so right about uh, uh, during the the financial crisis in two thousand and eight two thousand and nine, I became interested in uh, issues of the stability of the of the banking network and liquidity and uh, systemic risk was the was the uh, buzzword at the time, and so so then I started researching uh, what kind of uh, uh, models were available for uh, the role of the financial markets in in the rest of the economy, and and then quickly uh, uh, you know stumbled upon uh, the critiques of the available models, uh, DSG and, and and things like that, and and then became much more interested in the alternative models because I thought that uh, you know they were a lot more uh, uh, well plausible and and uh, had more potential to it. Uh, so I found yes. I was just going to say just to, just to be clear. So when we talk about the uh, the critiques, we're we're talking about the critiques of what I would call the mainstream neoclassical views, the the the, the, the dynamic uh, equilibrium yeah. models, for yeah. example, uh, the, the the problems of uh, t temporality, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. And when we've talked about this in the past, um, one of the points that you made to me is that actually the the mainstream economics uh, profession or the neoclassicals actually use a very, uh, you almost could say, Victorian form of, of mathematics. And actually, they're the ones who are uh, deploying the, the uh, mathematics in a very unsophisticated way. It's almost like using buggy whips when we've had automobiles invented. Uh, that, that's true. And so, uh, I mean, of course, there were advances, uh, but, but it's essentially based on, on 19th century uh, analysis, if you like. Mm -hmm. And so, so things about uh, marginal uh, rates of, of this and that, and then the equilibrium generated by that. So uh, since then, there's a lot more that was, was developed in mathematics, more uh, global uh, tools, so not only looking at local uh, stability and, and local convergence and things like that, but, uh, and, and, but essentially uh, uh, that there's no, no reason to be confined to the assumptions that are there in, in things like dynamic stochastic general equilibrium models. Uh, so, so I started looking at entirely uh, alternative views uh, that well, the INET community will, will be very familiar with because they, they are based on uh, stock flow consistent models. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and as it turns out, uh, they, they have at core uh, some, some very nice uh, mathematical uh, properties that, uh, as I uh, found out uh, very quickly, were not very uh, explored. Uh, because of the phenomenon that you mentioned, that uh, mathematics, because it was uh, heavily used and uh, heavily promoted as the language of uh, neoclassical economics, uh, then the uh, critic, critics of neoclassical economics associated mathematics with the essence of what uh, equilibrium was, was trying to say. And I think a lot of people would say that uh, those of us in the more heterodox uh, economics community, one of the criticisms that's often made uh, against us is that we're not very mathematical that we don't really understand math, that we don't use it. And um, one of the things that I think we're trying to uh, do with fields is to show that actually um, we are working with the uh, the highest forms of mathematics. That's right, and, and, and different, exactly, yeah. as, you, as you said, different types of mathematics. So mathematics is not just uh, local analysis and, and then uh, utility optimization and intertemporal consumption. That, that's uh, 
of course, uses mathematics very heavily, but they are all branches. Uh, in particular, what I'm most interested in is uh, dynamical systems uh, theory, which uh, starts with uh, systems of uh, ordinary differential equations, uh, but then goes much beyond that. There are things called uh, topological properties of dynamical systems that hold uh, globally and, and can help you understand uh, uh, beyond uh, local stability, beyond Jacobian analysis and, and things like and that. This, and this is the subject of, uh, of, of your grant, in fact. That's correct, yeah. So, so my grant uh, is meant to explore several models that were already proposed in the economics literature. Uh, mostly they go under, under the label of uh, formal Minsky models, if you like. Mm -hmm. so, so the models that try to capture some of the insights of Hyman Minsky mm -hmm. uh, in, in the stylized uh, form of, uh, you know, who is buying what, from who, so in, into the stock flow consistent uh, type of framework. Uh, but, but then the majority of these papers, they, they uh, proposed the model, uh, looked at some of the properties, some of the more immediate properties, uh, but didn't pursue the analysis to, uh, to the extent that I think it can be useful to, to show properties that are not immediate from uh, even immediate f to the modeler, to the person proposing it. And, and in many instances, uh, uh, as you say, they, they, they may start with the, a, a stock flow uh, accounting framework, but they don't apply it consistently. And you That's see right. that um, uh, particularly in the area of policy making today, um, this, um, this trend that we have towards uh, fiscal austerity or, or budget deficit hysteria. Uh, and what I always take to tell people is that, you know, you're, you're focusing on one area of the balance sheet, and if you're going to cut back yeah. here, then, uh, you know, where, where's the corresponding uh, savings or income effect going to be? Going that, to that's be absolutely correct. So, so what, what I have in the proposal is, I mean, I'm not trying to reinvent uh, economic models. The economists have, know, know a lot more than me uh, about that, but it's to... Some economists. Some <laughs> economists, yeah. <laughs> to, to, to put in a, in a uh, consistent framework and, and, and then see, you know, which type of models uh, analyze different corners of uh, what we're trying to uh, to understand uh, and more sort of integrated in an integrated way. And I guess in addition to Minsky, people like Wynne Godley would also play a part of... Uh, That's right, yeah. So so the uh, Godley-Lavoie uh, framework is, is heavily embedded in, in what I'm proposing. It, it, it gives you a, a wonderful way to generate uh, systems of differential equations, if you like, because whenever you look at the actual transactions that are happening between sectors mm -hmm. uh, and then keep track of it, you, you, you can, you can uh, express that as just, you know, period by period, what are the flows that go from one sector to another. But uh, as, as a mathematician, I have a, I have a colleague at the Fields Institute who says, uh, if it moves, differentiate. Uh, so it means whenever there's something happening in time, uh, yeah. a, a usually very powerful way to analyze it is to take to, to the limit of uh, very small times and then you analyze it as uh, differential equations. That doesn't mean that the real world uh, uh, works as systems of differential equations, but, but analyzing them that way gives you insight. Of and it gives you a more closer, uh, a closer approximation and in fact would probably help in policy making. And in fact, uh, I would argue that maybe if uh, some of these people, for example, in Europe who are um, enthusiastically uh, embracing uh, this fiscal austerity craze were, were actually to consider the full impact of those policies and taking it all the way through, as your colleague had suggested, might find that there's a, that, that you get some problematic outcomes. That's correct, yeah. And uh, so, so I think this is, this is the role of mathematics. Some, sometimes uh, people, people criticize and say that, uh, uh, well, in, in the abusive or sort of uh, uh, bad uses of mathematics is what we already talked about. It, it was used by uh, neoclassical economists in, in a way to, to impose their view and to uh, uh, sort of mask some of the assumptions, the economic assumptions that were behind the models into sort of impenetrable mathematical forms so they would be immune to criticism. So or or in, in, in many respects, sometimes uh, if, if reality didn't correspond to the model, instead of changing the model, you, 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 you just exclude reality. That, that's right, yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, uh, of course, that's not at all uh, what I endorse for uses of yeah. mathematics. But then there's a, there's a sort of a, um, a view that mathematics is, at best, a, a, a didactic, a pedagogical tool mm -hmm. that you first formulate your model uh, in you know, economic terms and, and then you follow some, some logical structure and, and that's it. And then to, to explain it to other people, you put in mathematical terms. Uh, I, I disagree with that 
th there is some value in that. Of course, mathematics helps to explain and formulate. Uh, but I think it goes beyond. It, it can actually reveal phenomena uh, that, as I said before, uh, might not have been evident even to the person proposing the model. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so I. I deeply believe that there are uh, 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 things that, first of all, can only be expressed in, in mathematical terms. For example, uh, the, the idea of uh, bifurcation in, in dynamical systems is, I mean, maybe not, not only, but it would be very hard to make a, a coherent explanation of what bifurcation is without a minimal uh, uh, mathematical apparatus. And, and it's also not obvious. So, so yeah. the idea that uh, small changes in some of the parameters in the model uh, can change not quantitatively only, but qualitatively the, the behavior of, of the system. So, so this is not something that just by as people say, thinking through, uh, you can immediately yeah. deduce. You need to do a little bit of, of, of formalism. And of course, then you, you check back if what the results are telling you uh, makes sense. And, and, and very I often, think that's the key. As you yeah. say, you have to check back. The, the whole basis of it, I mean, that's real scientific inquiry that you, you, you of course, assume a model to some extent, you use it to view the world, and then um, you, 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 if it's correspondent, if reality corresponds to it or it helps you organize reality, then of course it's very, very useful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but if it, if, if, if there is a continue inconsistencies being uh, shown up, then you've got to start questioning the model or reworking it in, in some that, respects. That's correct. Yeah. So, so in a, a one area that I put in the proposal, and now we are just coming to an end for the first paper coming out of it, is, is exactly analyzing the role of government intervention and uh, in stabilizing and trying to stabilize a system that without government intervention would go to uh, a sort of bad equilibrium state of infinite debt. Because the there, there, there's a classic case where I think the, uh, the equilibrium theory comes unstuck, and I think it, it's the underlying premise of, of market fundamentalism, this idea that you know markets are, are the uh, self-equilibrating uh, entities, right. you know, they just go back and forth. Whereas, you know, you have people like George Soros. So I think this is one of his key insights that, who, who points out that markets are actually, if they go to a far enough ex extreme, they become like wrecking balls, and they don't go back to equilibrium go further on. In fact, that, that, that's correct. And, and with a simple analysis and a very uh, simplified model, that of course can be criticized for uh, the assumptions all through. But but the point is that you you want to reduce to to very uh, uh, bare minimum of what you want to model and see if you can reproduce some of the phenomena like what you just described from source. Yeah. So what we find is that, and this came out of uh, doing a thorough analysis of a model that had been proposed by Steve Keen uh, mm -hmm. more than 10 years ago, that there are, uh, apart from several other uh, irrelevant equilibria uh, that can be discarded based on other reasoning, uh, there are two equilibria that you cannot discard. One that you would think is the uh, desirable equilibrium with a finite debt, but then there's another one that if you, if you f go, as you said, uh, sufficiently far from a region where you would converge to the good equilibrium, then you converge to a bad equilibrium. Even, which has infinite debt, and that so that and that's the real way to I think to look at debt be, as opposed to this arbitrary you know Rogoff Reinhardt number where they just simply say you know if you get a public debt to GDP ratio above the ninety percent threshold they arbitrarily say yeah. bad things start to happen. No, no, that, that's right. And this is this is the uh, uh, sort of beauty of dynamical systems that you look at all the variables that are of interest at the same time. So there's this concept of the phase space. The phase space is where uh, your variables live, and there are regions in the phase. Space Place where you would converge to a certain point and other regions where you wouldn't. But the regions are characterized by uh, different variables taking uh, different, different values. So it's not just one. You cannot just read all. Whenever that uh, mm -hmm. goes above, you need to look at everything that is happening to the other mm -hmm. dynamic variables in, in the system. And so let me ask you one final question. Um, you know, we're called the Institute for New Economic Thinking. Um, I presume you think that what you're doing is one of the things we should be embracing as part of the new economic thinking. And uh, is, is there a, what, what do you think is uh, of this new economic thinking? Well, uh, I, I, I love it, of course. That's why, that's why I'm here at, at this conference to uh, immerse myself in, in economic thinking, uh, new economic thinking. But, but I do think that there is a role for, for mathematics uh, beyond just being a, something that you do at the very end just to do the formalism of, of your uh, models. I think there is a sort of a creative and, and uh, uh, discovery role for mathematics. It can help you uh, discover things that were not there when you when you first uh, thought about the models. And and not just uh, my speciality and what I proposed uh, is in particular dynamical systems, but I think there are a whole uh, 
set of other mathematical tools that help with that. For example, in uh, network science. So, so networks are things that mathematicians have become increasingly interested in because of uh, Facebook or, or uh, epidemiology and, 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 and so whenever the, the links between the constituents are, are in, uh, as important as the constituents themselves. Uh, and if you apply that to banking system, so again you discover phenomena and uh, uh, sort of uh, criticalities and, and uh, uh, long-term behavior uh, that were not at all obvious uh, when you just think of banks and their individual relationship with the, either the central bank or their customers. So there are effects that are created by the network itself. And, and, and mathematics is the, is the tool for not just formalizing and analyzing it, but also to discover those effects. And we, uh, of course, at INET have now recently concluded a small little institutional uh, joint venture with Fields, and so hopefully we will um, help to uh, continue uh, 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 with this journey and, and, and develop it with you. That's right. Uh, thank you very much for uh, coming to talk to me. Thank you, Arshad.